Hi guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great. Uh, today we have a little different type of topic. We're going to talk about optimization and specifically optimization of loops. Now, in most programs, games or whatever, you're probably going to run into loops uh, a lot and you're going to have big loops and lots of data to loop through. So this is a very important topic. And there's stuff you, you guys and girls probably don't know if you're new to programming. So I'm just going to go through that. But before I do, please check out the description box. you got a bunch of useful links down there uh, to all kinds of playlists. Uh, my Twitter, support page, Discord even. You can go check that out. You can find me there. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like this stuff. Um, otherwise, let's just keep going. So let me get you started here. This might be a little complicated, but just try to follow through and use these techniques as much as you can and you'll just thank yourself later. So number one, if you're working in Visual Studio um, or Code Blocks or something, you'll probably notice these two things, debug and release. They always show up everywhere and you're like, what the hell is this? Well, basically this is two different compile types. Now debug doesn't have any optimization from the compiler. It doesn't help you optimize your code when you're compiling it. Because remember, compilation is just converting C++ or any type of uh, language uh, that is user friendly uh, human friendly rather and and just compile that to computer code right or hardware code so that's what a compiler does and there are different compilers and they do it differently so make sure to pick a good compiler so but but visual studio basically it has debug and release now release gives you full optimization of your program when you compile it so it's a lot faster than debug so if you're about to ship a product or a program that you've created and you want it to be as fast as possible make sure to have release selected when you build it otherwise the exe is going to be in debug and it's going to be really slow, right? And you, when you're expecting it to be fast, so you don't want debug. Um, so if I just show you how that is. So if we go in here into the properties, uh, if I select debug, you're going to see in C++ optimization that is disabled for debug. But if I change it to release, we'll see maximum performance, favor speed, O2. All right? So that's the difference. That's what the compiler does for you. Now, there are two different ways. Now, if you're not compiling your code in Visual Studio or something, you're probably using the G++ uh, O main dot CPP main, uh, this compiling technique, right? This is probably what you're doing. But if you're doing this, you're not getting any optimization. If you want optimization, you should write, excuse me, dash O2 after or before. I'm not 100% sure. Check that out in, in on Google. Just Google it, G++ optimization. You'll find it, no problems. But You'll use either O2 or O1. O1 is slightly less optimized, and then you got nothing, which is completely not optimized. So that's uh, that's two ways where you can just make your program so much faster, even if they're small, crappy programs. It doesn't matter. So just just make sure you remember that. Um, always optimize your code. Always build it in release when you're done. When you've debugged, finished debugging, broken down bugs and stuff. So so just remember that. But we'll keep it in debug. Now to get started. I just want to show you that I included C time. It's very important for our tests. We're basically, I'm going to show you and I'm going to test the speeds and I'm going to show you the speeds. Vector is important because um, optimizing loops is fine, but usually when you use these STD vectors and STD uh, lists and stuff, then you have these iterators that you can use. And that's going to be really, really helpful for us. And we're going to use some C11 stuff. Okay. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to say int start start time um, equals uh, clock all right and now this clock function comes from C time so it's gonna give us a start time and an int uh, and T equals clock all right and then we're gonna print out the time uh, and T minus start T divided by uh, double clocks per second new line so this is gonna give us the time it took between these two clock clocks okay so right here we're gonna write all our code in between here um, and I should just say what this is I should say time uh, like that so there you go so we got the time here um, now all the code is gonna be in between okay and here I'm gonna just uh, initialize stuff. I'm only gonna do the loops between these timers. I'm not gonna initialize stuff in there because it's gonna take extra time and it's gonna screw with our timings. Okay, so initialize. 
first of all, I'm going to create a vector of integers, whatever, uh, int array. And I'm going to say that it's, uh, how much is that? 100, 1 million? No, 100,000? 100,000 big, okay? And it's going to be a bunch of ones. So this is how you create 100,000 ones in the vector. So there we go. Now we got a vector. Then I'm going to do an int sum variable, which is going to be zero. And what I'm going to do at the end here is I'm going to print out sum as well, just to see that it's working uh, like that. And then we'll pause the program. Um, so that's cool. That's good. So we're going to be testing out a normal normal loop uh, C++11 range loop um, for each. I'll just call it for each loop and then a iterator range loop. I'm not sure if that's the name exactly, but we'll be testing these three out. So let's start off with the for loop. It's just a regular for loop um, int array dot size. And then we're just going to do sum is plus equal to int array at position i. And we'll just run this. So this is the regular loop. Now remember, I have OBS and stuff running, so it might screw up with my time, but it shouldn't. So we get an average value of, I don't know, maybe 0 0.6, something like that, 0 0.06 seconds, right? 61 milliseconds, basically, something like that, right? Um, so yeah, there you go, 65, 60, something like that. So that's basically it. Now if I comment this out, that's our, let's see, let's comment that in here. Uh, maybe average 0 0.06, right? Uh, MS, pretty sure. Let's run that one more time, just to see if we get zero now. Okay, cool. Um, run that one more time, just to make sure. 0 0.053, 0 0.06, yeah, something like that, whatever. Okay, so let's try the for each loop. Now, how you write that is for um, auto um, reference, I reference, why are you not writing that symbol? Oh god, what is that? There you go. Auto i int array. Okay, so no, it should be here, I think. There we go. Okay, so basically what this does is it, this is our i in the for loop. Okay, when we write a for loop, we have our i like this. Basically, it's like that. It's just that it also stands for the actual element in the array at that index. So at that index, that we're actually pointing at that element. It's almost like a pointer. It is a reference. So it's almost, uh, we're actually accessing the element in this array. Okay, so it's really short for loop. Auto is uh, a way for in C++ to create a variable with an automatic type. So it, C++ gives you the type, basically, depending on what you write after it. I can write uh, auto i equals 20, it will become an integer. Auto s equals std string, that will become a string. Uh, so you understand it's kind of automatic like that anyway we're here we'll do sum plus equals um, i basically because remember i is the actual element at that position in the array so there we go now we're going to run this and we'll see it takes 0 0.01 a lot faster and this is in debug mind you so 0 0.01 0.01, okay, it's really, really fast. 0.001, right? Uh, there we go, so that's much faster. It's, the thing is, okay, there are two optimizations happening here. And the thing that's happening is, when we do this, for, let's look at this for loop again. There are two problems. One thing is, uh, we're creating an I, we're, we're, you know, it's, it's just not using iterators, basically, but we're also doing I++. plus plus. Now it's a lot faster to do plus plus I for reasons under the hood in C++ that I don't really know a lot about but it's basically it skips an operation and what it does is it kinda skips that operation which takes time every loop right? every time you iterate it so it skips that so it makes it a little faster so if I comment this out again and run that we'll see that it might be a little little faster it's, it's a little faster yeah, we're not getting up into the well it should be it should be faster it should be faster just trust me on that it should be uh, especially if you're 
increment well no sorry sorry I'm just dumb we're not incrementing an iterator so never mind don't think about that but when you're working with iterators it's faster um, yeah just remember that let's see because that brings me to the next point which is the iterator range loop so there's an annoying way you can do this now if you have a vector you can create iterators for it and an iterator is basically like a pointer which starts at some point and it ends at some point and that's exactly what the for each loop uses it uses an iterator here to to go through the loop iterating means basically going through something right uh, like a loop is iteration so that basically does all that for you it creates an iterator and it does the looping but f if we want to create this for loop function by ourselves we have to define an std vector int um, const iterator end equals c end int array okay uh, let's just do that there we go okay so this is really crazy right but this is basically just a variable like a pointer it's almost like a pointer it's just that it it is um, is used for iteration so this means that we're beginning at the end of the int array and this is called uh, iterator caching caching basically we're saving the end position of this array so we know where the end is otherwise in the for loop if we call this each loop we're gonna have to call this function each time and it's gonna take up quite some bit of overhead maybe like I don't know how much it was like um, five six percent performance something like that whatever it's, it's good to do this cache it and then we're gonna start the for loop and we're gonna create the same thing an std vector like that iterator I'll just call it it equals C begin int array. So it's at the beginning of the int array, okay? And then mm, while uh, it is not equal to end, basically while it's not reached the end here, we're going to do plus plus i, okay? So that's it, plus plus i. Uh, let's see why it, sorry about that, it, there you go. Um, so that's it. That's basically it. Now we're caching it. It's really important so we don't have to check for the end every loop. We're also doing plus plus it to skip that operation that's done at the beginning. And we are uh, we're basically using it like a regular for loop just with iterators. And then I'm just going to do this. Sum plus equals iterator. Now it's like a pointer so I'm dereferencing it right here. Okay, it's really important. And, uh, and yeah, there you go. So let's run this. Let's see what kind of times we'll get. Right here, 0 0.025. So this range for loop is a little bit faster. But what this does is it basically gives me the option to set set where I end it and I start it. So that's why it's pretty nice. I think this for each loop skips a bunch of stuff and it really optimizes the loop. So this is good to know. Uh, if I do it plus plus, now it should be a little slower. Not a lot slower, but a little slower. Uh, 1.3. 0 0.1 even so doing that again makes it a lot faster damn that was a huge increase in speed okay shit I didn't expect that okay so see that's a lot better right there use that and if I don't cache it if I don't cache it and I use C end instead like this uh, boom yeah, 0 0.098. So it's a lot slower to not cache it. Okay. Um, and if I remove both optimizations, it will be the worst. So just remember, these two steps are really important. So you get a really fast thing. Now let me just go ahead and turn this to release, and you'll see the turbo kick in, and we'll go crazy. It's zero there. Um, properties, font, let's see, 36, 28 maybe. Uh, there we go. Yeah, time zero. Why is sum okay? Because I didn't print out sum. Okay, sum. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's pretty insane. Time zero. So it's almost instantaneous. Uh, zero point zero 
two, pretty sure. Something like that. Um, and then if I increase this a little more, okay, reach the end of the video. Let me just show you. Okay, so 0 0.004 in release. Okay, now if I run the normal loop just for reference here, uh, this is probably not gonna work that well. 0 0.005, okay, yeah. Well, it optimizes this loop, so it knows what to do. Because remember, it's doing its own optimizations on all loops and stuff when we're compiling a release. Uh, but yeah, remember that. Check out G++ compiler stuff for those of you working on in Linux. It's really important. Then you can use all that super speed. Yeah, otherwise, get used to this kind of this range for loop. It's it's the best I think, and also this uh, this other one. Also, there's one last thing I want to tell you is that when we're working with these, you can actually just use auto here, auto, and auto here as well, and it makes it a lot less clunky basically it still works the same and um, we use C++ 11 here so we haven't talked a lot about C++ 11 but hopefully we'll get into that soon uh, but these are really useful hope this helped hope you learned something um, sorry for babbling on but uh, thanks for watching best of luck take care check out the description box as usual got a bunch of useful stuff down there drop a like subscribe if you like it and I'll see you guys and girls in the next one right bye bye